Greetings, YouTube. Recently, someone asked me about spears, pole arms in role-playing games. Um, I'm going to talk about Pathfinder because it's my favorite system. Now, there isn't a lot of granularity to Pathfinder. It isn't all that fine. Things come in pretty big chunk. It's very much a quantum game. Lots of games are like this, but it varies from game to game how fine a granulation there is. And in Pathfinder, things are pretty rough. As in for D&D up to 3.5, I can't tell you about 4th edition. Now, the sort of spear-like spectrum starts with javelins. Now, it isn't really a pole arm; it's a missile weapon, but it's got a decent range. You can't really use it in hand-to-hand -hand combat because it's lightly built, and it weighs too much, according to the book. Almost all the weapons do. Um, the next step up from that is the weapon known as a short spear, which I think really should be called either a heavy javelin or a pilum, because that's pretty much what it is. A device that you throw at people, but can be used in a one-handed fashion as a uh, melee device if you choose. Um, kind of thing that you would most likely throw at an opponent before you draw a weapon that's a little more useful. The next step up from that is a two-handed weapon either the spear or the long spear. Now, for some strange reason, D&D and Pathfinder both think that spears, the standard spear, is a two-handed weapon. Now, the standard spear is essentially a dagger on a stick that's probably in the seven to nine foot range. And it's the original military weapon. And the shield and spear is probably the most common combination of armor and weapon in the entire history of humanity. It was used for thousands of years. Yet, according to the game, you have to use two hands on a spear. That makes no sense for a spear to be used two-handed, none whatsoever. Maybe you could justify it if someone is only qualified in simple weapons proficiency. You could say, okay, they aren't really all that well trained. Okay, I might buy that. But if anybody who has any kind of martial training, I let them use a spear in one hand. Yes, if they want to go to the lengths of taking the oversized to weapon feet, yes, they could use one in each hand. Who's going to do that? There are so much better options. But a spear is really most effective when used in one hand with the shield in the other. Next step from that, you have the long spear. Now the long spear should probably more properly be called the pike, or the great, the Greek, when the fate, what they used him in the phalanxes, would be the sarasis, or sarissa, sorry, the sarissa. I always say that wrong. Um, and that's a very long spear, like 15 to 20 feet in length, or 15 to 18 was probably pretty average. And that's where the person who asked me the question about spears really comes in. He wanted to know why these weapons don't have more reach than 10 feet. And realistically, they should. They should have more, like, like a long spear should more realistically have a 15 foot reach. Um, but they were never intended to be used in a solo one-on-one -on -one combat. Pikes and Sarissa were meant to be used in formations, lock step with someone next to you, so that you had a, a wall of points facing your opponent. In the case of a, of a phalanx, you had the front rank with their weapons out 15 feet, and the rank behind them with their weapons out like 10 feet, and the rank behind them with their weapons out like 5 feet. So there's these layers of points facing you. You did not want to charge at a phalanx. It was bad. Another thing I would allow for people with martial arts proficiency to do is to allow them to use a shield and a two-handed long spear, even if I'm only going to have it a 10-foot reach. Because the Greeks, for example, would use a shield, but the shield was slung like a messenger bag. So there was a strap that went around side their neck. So the weight of the shield was on here, and they only kind of guided the shield with their forearm so they could hold the spear like this. Because, again, they're in lock stack. So there's not a whole lot of shield play in that kind of a situation. You're not having to make large, gross movements. It's just small things, just making sure you keep your shield as close to your companion as you can and hoping the guy next to you is doing the same. But I think even in D&D, because this is a fantasy game, I would still allow someone with a shield to use a two-handed spear. The next up is the trident, which is the only one-handed pole armor in the game, and it's a really good version of a spear. <laughs> You can throw it, it's got a thrusting tip, and the, the classic trident is almost always seen in Roman gladiatorial combat, and even though it has a, a range, I can't imagine most people are ever going to throw it. 
it just doesn't seem to make sense. It's the, probably the only weapon you've got, unless you maybe you're using a, speed, uh, a shield, which means you maybe can do something, or maybe a net, and a net's a pretty crappy weapon. Um, and then after that, you start getting into things which are true two-handed pole arms. The glaive, my favorite, uh, the Japanese version being the Naginata. Um, the halberd, which is the Swiss army knife of uh, pole arms. It can pierce, it can slash, you can set it for charges. It's just a really useful weapon. And then also the other weird things that come out there, like the, the Dilution Hammer and the, the Val Falchons and all the other ones that used to be the huge list of different types of pole arms back in first edition where they had a whole page dedicated to all the different images. I loved it, but let's face it, most people never use any of them. Um, now, all of these are really interesting, but the spear is the most basic weapon there is in combat. And the game doesn't reflect it well. So like I said, the changes I mentioned, allowing a martial art, person with martial proficiency to use a spear in one-handed, allowing a person with martial proficiency to use a long spear or a pike, or whatever we want to call it, um, with two hands and a shield, and perchance lengthening the, the, the reach on them to 15 feet. Yeah, it's going to mean that, yes, they can reach a little bit further, which is fine, but realize that that is absolutely useless if somebody gets closer to you than 15 feet. If they're 12 feet to you, you're going to have a really hard time using that weapon effectively against them. Unless you have the feet which allows you to start choking up on the weapon, you're in trouble. This is most likely the thing to do is you drop the spear, and you draw, but you draw another weapon, which is this, probably the brightest thing you can do in that situation. Um, and I also think that the short spear should probably be renamed either a heavy javelin or a, uh, I just call it a pylum because, the, you know, it worked for the Romans. So those are my thoughts today on spears. So I asked my viewers, any of you out there who are fans of weapons and D&D &D and Pathfinder and such, what do you think about pole arms? Do you think that the game gets it close enough for you? Do you like more realism, less realism? Where do you fall on the pole arm spear spectrum?